And so there's another way of looking at the layers of the Earth. We looked at it compositionally, but you also can look at it structurally, or the way that it look like or behave. And so in this video, we're going to be talking about that. So, the Earth can be split into three major compositional zones, as we talked about in the previous video. So I'm going to mark them here so you can see them. And just like they show you on the drawing on the, the bottom right, so you have a crust, that this crust can extend from 5 to, uh, to about 80 kilometers thick, and then underneath the crust, you're going to have your mantle, and the mantle will go, will go from all the way down here until about 2,900 kilometers. So you're talking about at least at least 2,800 kilometers thick, and then you get the core, and the core is going to be the rest all the way down to 63 uh, kilometers deep, and so you're talking about a difference that's almost 3,400 kilometers, and so the core is a big, big chunk of the Earth. But since it's in the middle, it's not actually most of the volume. Most of the volume of the Earth will be taken by the mantle. Because remember, the core is, in, is very thick compared to the mantle, but it's also going, uh, it's in the middle of the Earth. So this, this volume here is not going to be as big as that big volume up there that's going around the entire Earth. It's just a bigger circle. So that's going to be a bigger piece of the Earth. So the mantle will take more of the volume of the Earth. Anyways, those will be the compositional zones. But there's also a way to look at it structurally. Now, I want you to remember as you talk about this that the temperature is going higher and higher as you go deeper and deeper into the Earth. And you can see that happening here, that as you go deeper into the Earth, the temperature is plummeting, and pl plummeting, rising like crazy into the Earth. And you also notice that the pressure will also be going higher and higher because you're having more and more rocks sitting on top of the layers, and so that's going to be great, becoming greater and greater. And it's the play between pressure and temperature that's actually going to end up causing differences in the composition or structure of the layers of the earth okay now the first topmost layer of the earth which includes actually both the crust and the upper part of the mantle it's called the lithosphere now the lithosphere is the hard part of the earth we're talking here about the shell of the earth which is solidified over billions of years of cooling and that is the shell that is on the outside of the earth now this actually includes the crust and the very top part of the mantle okay and so this was discovered, by the way, by a scientist called Mohorovic, and he was studying seismic waves and the way they travel into the Earth, and he identified the fact that when the seismic waves hit this magic layer, all of a sudden, the, the, the waves will turn in strange ways when they hit that layer. They will bend or refract because they're hitting a new type of rock. And he called that the Mohorovic discontinuity, or Maho. Now, the Maho discontinuity will be somewhere around here, separating the upper the lower part of the of the crust from the actual mantle okay but both that piece of the mantle and the upper core crust are kind of considered to be structurally to be considered the same thing because we call them the lithosphere now these chunk this piece of rock is actually broken into chunks because there's so much heat coming from the inside of the earth that it's kind of hard for any layer on top to stay completely still think of it as a egg that's put in the microwave without without being inside of a water it's not going to cook it's going to boil from the inside there's going to be so much pressure there that it's going to pop. And you can even do that on the microwave. Uh, we're going to do it in class so you can see what I'm talking about. But when you do that, the egg blows up because of too much internal pressure. And so it will crack. So that's what's happening to the Earth. Earth's pressure from the inside of the hot core cracks the surface into tiny bits. So this lithosphere is broken into chunks. And this very dense rock broken into chunks. Then you come to the asthenosphere. Now the asthenosphere is actually the second layer of the mantle because the, it has the actual part that's very different from the crust. And by the way, the only difference between the lithosphere that belongs to the crust and the lithosphere that belongs to the mantle is that the mantle's lithosphere is slightly denser because under, it's under more pressure. All right. Now, we're talking about the first 100 kilometers here of, of the Earth, the lithosphere. Then you hit the asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is the next layer and it's part of the upper mantle, considered part of the upper mantle. And it's about 100 to 200 kilometers thick, 100 to 200 kilometers thick. And the cool thing about the stenosphere is that it's now under so much pressure and heat that it's actually becoming plastic-like. I think of it as like rock that looks like Play-Doh almost. It's malleable rock that's kind of like moving slowly but surely. And this stenosphere rock actually flows underneath the lithosphere it's plastic like rock it's a plastic like way of rock that moves sideways underneath the lithosphere and because the asthenosphere is moving the pieces of the lithosphere are moving because of it 
So I imagine this lithosphere as this block of rock sitting in a conveyor belt of the mental that's dragging ever so slowly these blocks and making them hit each other and so forth. And that's what plate tectonics is all about. The movement of the asthenosphere is causing the lithosphere to move. But why is this the stenosphere moving? Well, it's moving because of convection cells. And you can see it here in the top corner. You have see what I'm talking about. Heat from the core rises by convection, all right? And by convection, it hits the asthenosphere and conducts the, the heat to the, to the crust, which then becomes hotter and makes the mantle colder. And as the mantle gets colder, it will sink back down and we heat up again once it hits the core and the process restarts and so you have these convection cells that we talked about when we talk about the layers of the sun also on the inside of the earth and as these convection cells rotate it's going to be rotating the mantle around so i think of this the stenosphere as literally the conveyor belt that's sitting on wheels of convections of the in the mantle and those wheels are dragging the, the stenosphere to the side now underneath the stenosphere you have another layer of mantle that we call the lower mantle or the mesosphere now the mesosphere is the thickest layer of the earth it has the most the biggest piece you're talking about something in the order of 2200 to 2500 kilometers thick and it's the it's whatever you have left between the stenosphere and the inside of the earth so you're going to be having this very densely packed rock now we're talking about lots and lots of heat here but at the same time the pressure is getting so hot this rock is being squeezed so hard that it cannot melt so the, the mesosphere is actually dense rock even denser than the lithosphere was but it's so so densely packed that it, it barely 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 becomes liquid so the asthenosphere is actually more liquid than the actual rest of the metal is but that is hotter and it's actually much hotter than the asthenosphere is and it's getting hotter and hotter but it's not going to be liquefied because of the intense pressure but even though it's like this dense rock it does flow in convection cells still so it's still flowy even though it's dense rock even denser than the lithosphere is so it's kind of hard to understand but that's what's happening there in the in the mesosphere then you hit the core but the cool thing about the core is that the outer core the outer core is going to be liquid so this this whole thing here is of course going to be a core and the outer core is going to be liquid now the rock is under pressure but when you get to the outer core temperatures are so extremely hot that the rock that wasn't melting in the mantle actually ends up melting and you get molten molten rock now remember that the most common element here is iron and nickel and you have this layer of liquid rock spinning in the middle of the earth and that's interesting, actually. That's why, or when we did it in the beginning of the year, when you spin a hard-boiled egg and a regular egg, the hard-boiled egg spins differently than the, the other one. If you have liquid on the inside, that causes the earth to wobble. And it causes a lot of other things as well, like the magnetic field of the earth, this flowing uh, river of charged particles of iron flowing in a circle in the inside of the earth. And this liquid core's motion is very important for the earth, and it's actually what warms up the mantle, which then goes in convection cells to, to move the asthenosphere, which then moves the lithosphere, causing plate tectonics. So it's all very important. And as you can see, the liquid core extends from 2,900 to 5,100 kilometers deep. So you're talking about a lot, a lot of um, very thick layer here. You're talking about a layer that's almost 2,200 kilometers thick, all right? And so that's going to be molten lava, right? Now, it's good, a good chance to talk about the difference between lava and magma. This actually is magma. Lava and magma are different things. Magma is molten rock inside of the earth. Lava is when that same thing hits the surface or touches the air, okay? So it's molten, molten magma. And now this magma, by the way, will find cracks through the mantle, asthenosphere, and crust, rise to the top and create a volcano and it will try to do that because it's under so much heat and pressure that it's actually trying to escape to the top and that's one of the ways that the earth releases the internal heat that it has all right then inside of the inner core you have solid solid core called the inner core which is an iron and wick ball of solid so the inner core very bottom part of the core is going to be a solid ball of iron so think, think, imagine iron you know I mean, when you think of iron in real life, you think of real steel, which is iron mixed in with carbon. But imagine a ball of iron, dense, packed, hot, burning, simmering red, hot iron ball. That is what the, the, the core of is like. It's solid metal. So it's metallic, hot, 
metal that is inside of the earth and that is actually one of the reasons why the earth is also magnetic because you have this metal that's solid and a liquid metal surrounding it, going around it which creates electrical currents which then translate to magnetism but the interesting thing about it is that this layer is extremely hot and by the way you're talking about about a thousand two hundred kilometers of thickness for the inner core and you're talking about temperatures down here which are only going away this this actual temperature graph is not showing you what's actually happening to the temperature but you're talking about temperatures in the order of 5,000 degrees so the actual core will be somewhere deep here at 5,000 degrees and above this is almost as hot as the as the photosphere of the Sun so you're talking about a very very hot layer um, of of the earth and that's internal earth energy caused by gravity compressing the layers of the earth on top of the core and that's actually why it's solid because even though it's extremely hot very very hot it's still going to be very very under pressure and so it cannot melt so remember melting by definition is when the particles are far from each other and like moving but solids by definition when the particles are touching each other more and the pressure is so high that it's forcing to be solid so if you think about the earth in general you're going to have a solid lithosphere followed by a plastic like so say half solid half liquid um, a stenosphere followed by a mantle that's going to be solid but flowing followed by a liquid outer core followed by a solid inner core and this alternation of solid and liquid is happening because of interactions between pressure and temperature as you go deeper into the earth now you might be asking yourself how do we know that the earth looks like this how do we know that the earth looks like this well what Mo what Mohavich did gives you an idea of how we figure that out. We can find out how the Earth looks like by studying seismic waves. Now, there's two things we can do, actually. You can use something called a ground-penetrating radar, and that's when you send a, uh, um, a pulse into the ground, and based on the way that the ground uh, we hits, when it, when it hits certain surfaces, it will reflect back to the top, and based on the pattern of refraction and reflection, you can get a picture of what the ground looks like in the computer. And if you see some, something, for example, that looks like that uh oh there is a person in down there they actually use that to find out things which are buried and ought to find out oil reserves and all kinds of things now uh, that's gonna have its limits though because any device is not gonna be generated post strong enough to go deep into the earth so you can also use the earth's own uh, waves to try to figure out how it looks like whenever an earthquake happens the waves of the earthquake will travel through the earth but because the layers are in different compositions this, these waves will refract and reflect as they travel through the earth they will travel differently through the outer core then they travel through the inner core and so forth and they will refract in different ways and by detecting the way these waves are moving across the planet you can actually get an idea of what the different layers look like because of the changing densities and changing composition of the layers you can study that so it's by studying seismic waves and by using things like ground penetrating radars that you find out what these layers of the earth were all like and we're gonna do a little more like that when we talk about earthquakes in a couple of chapters so you're gonna learn a little more about that but understand that there's compositional zones and structural zones compositional zones are just looking at the chemical composition of the layers the cross is made of silicon and oxygen the metal is made of mostly of magnesium and the core is made of, of iron and nickel and then you have structural zones which are the lithosphere a stenosphere mesosphere outer core and inner core and these are divided based on what the temperature and pressure is making the structure of the layer be like. Lithosphere is hard, dense rock, followed by a plastic-like, a stenosphere, which flows carrying the lithosphere with it in a conveyor belt. And the wheels which are moving the stenosphere is the convection cells that happen in the mesosphere, which is a dense, packed rock because of the pressure. Underneath that, you have a molten layer of rock, of iron and nickel, which is the outer core. It's flowing around, creating the magnetic field and all things like that. And then inside of that, you have a solid ball of iron and nickel, of metallic, very hot um, iron and nickel that's because of the pressure of the gravity pulling all the layers into the core. And that is the layers of the Earth. And I hope you want to learn everything about it. So I'll see you in the next video.